Yeah, um, his will. He, he, he willed this comeback. We didn't have, for whatever reason, we were just giving up everything they wanted. And his intensity, his determination, his will put us in position. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it was a tough game, obviously. Could have gone either way. We've had a few of these now in the last few games. Um, but back to back, I'm proud of our guys giving ourselves a chance to, to, you know, the way the way we started being down. I think I think one time we were down 18 points. And we could have just said, you know what, let's just wait till we get home. But we fought back and we, we made it a game and you know we made some mistakes down the stretch that we probably could have won the game. And you started um, Daniel Gafford in the second half. What were you looking for either out of the defense or from him individually that could uh, kind of give you guys a lift there? Oh, we needed, um, we needed a, a, a guy that was going to come in and, and make an impact. And that's what I liked. I liked about it. He came in and made an impact. And the minutes, I mean, the minutes are there. Whoever wants them, they're going to have to fight for them. They're going to have to perform. And I thought he, he gave us, and Rolo gave us good minutes. And you know, next game, maybe maybe the other guys can have the opportunities. But it's the minutes are there. I thought he gave us good minutes that put us in a position to 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 make a comeback and 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 play better basketball in the second half. Fred, hey Scott, uh, what what did you see that was working so well for Russell tonight? Well, is is um, the shot was falling, made his threes. You know, we only hit six threes, and he had three of them. Uh, but we, we somehow still scored 124 points. Um, he only had seven free throws. That's, it's mind-boggling to me. It's just it's mind-boggling. It's just, it's, he just has to keep attacking. Neil? Hey, Scott. First, what did you see on the last defensive possession when the Mavs got the three? Well, we made a mistake. We made a mistake. We're up two. We talked about it after the game. We got to learn from it. We made a mistake. We switched the pick and roll up top. Russell had him inside the three. We're up two. You don't give up a three. But, you know, it's one of those things we got to learn from. He'll learn from it. Rui's, Rui's a terrific player, but we can't give up. A, we can't give up a wide open three or a late contest three. We got we to gotta know. The, the score and, and do a better job. But like I said, it, it, he didn't do it on purpose. It's just that we haven't been in those positions a lot and we haven't practiced a lot. We haven't practiced at all in, uh, in those situations in, in three months. Uh, so, but it's it's a tough, tough break, but you know, we're gonna have to learn from it and we'll be in this position again because we're gonna be down the stretch, gonna be some tough games. And the final play, you guys drew it up for Brad any thought process on that over possibly getting Russell a shot? Yeah, I thought, well, Brad was, Brad had it going the last couple of possessions. I thought he had a chance to attack Luca's feet. Um, and then he, he lost control, but he had a good look. That was a good look. I thought it was actually going in. It's a, you know, it could have gone, it's a make or miss league and it could have gone either way. But like I said, nothing to be ashamed of. We, we fought, we competed. We don't want to. We don't want to lose games, but you don't want to. You don't want to leave 48 minutes on the floor knowing that you didn't give your best. And and I can honest. I know in my heart, you know, our guys they gave their their best shot, and we came up a a, a point short. Fred, yeah, Scott, I'm just. I'm, I'm just curious, there have been a couple of, of late game situations now where, where Rui has made uh, suboptimal decisions defensively. How do you guys handle that? You talk about how you know it's a learning moment for him. What's the process of making that a learning moment so it doesn't get lost? Like, what do you, what, what's tomorrow look like? Well, it, it'd be, it's been time on the flight. We'll probably show him the film, show him the clip. He probably already has, uh, Corey coach that works with them the most will show them but everybody everybody needs to see it and 
uh, like I said, we got a lot of we got a lot of guys that that have never been in these situations, and with the way that the season has gone and the lack of practice time, and you, it, you, it's hard to work on um, late game situations. Not, you need time on the floor. Let's face it; you can watch you can watch as much film uh, you want. I mean, that would make everybody an expert at it. But you need reps. I mean, you got to be able. You can't read it. You can't watch it. You got to feel it. And that's the thing that we haven't been able to do, but we're doing the best we can. And but he bounced back. I mean, it's not he didn't lose the game. Trust me, we the game doesn't come down to one possession. But those are those are lessons that we have to get better better at, and and, and we all will, myself included. Can you just take us through that final uh, offensive possession and and maybe what you were trying to do before the ball trickled away? Uh, first person to learn to save Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I was trying to get downhill, and Luca was a little play for me to. I mean, we've been doing it the last three minutes of the game, uh, kind of picking them out and pick and rolls and getting downhill. Uh, yeah, he was in foul trouble late in the game. I think I actually played before that. He fouled me. I got two free throws, and that might have been his fifth foul or whatever. Uh, so the play was just to come off a of DHO and attack downhill. Uh, I seen it was a little congested, so I mean. It, Defeated the purpose of going downhill. I tried to pull back and lost the ball a little bit. Rolled by all, and I still had a great look at it, and just didn't make it. And and late down the stretch of the game, you were you were really getting into a groove, running around those curls on the uh, on the right side. What was what was working well for you there? I don't I don't know. Uh, I mean, a lot of those we put Luca in it, so. Uh, you know, we were just attacking them, and Tim fouled me one or once or twice. And, uh, you know, just just trying to attack him. We know he's a great scorer, um, but you know, we want to try to get him to move laterally, move his feet, and make him guard a little bit. Uh, we had some success with it for sure, uh, but hated couldn't have been the last play that we had the success on. Neil, hey Brad. What is some of the feedback that officials are giving to you during the game? Um, I'm just curious, you know, because I know for previously you said, you know, sometimes they say, yeah, we admit you know, we got it wrong or what, what is that like during the games? Same shoot. It's every game. It's every game. And, you know, you guys see me, I sit over there and watch the iPad and watch how I play and watch what's going on in the game. And, Granted, we can't go up to the refs and show them the fouls, but they go back at halftime and review them. In every single game, they come back and say the same thing. Oh, I missed two fouls. I missed that. You're right. You're absolutely right. You got fouled. You got hit. And it's mind boggling to me because, you know, we get texts. I got a tech tonight for saying that's an and one. You know, DB gets texts. Russ gets texts. We all get texts for voicing, you know, what's actually happening in the game. And to me, I'm the, probably one of the most respectful players in the league when it comes to talking to refs. I'm never going to call you out of your name. I'm not going to be disrespectful. I'm always going to approach you in a respectful manner. Um, so it's just, and on top of that, they know I'm not somebody who comes up to them and complains every single time. So when I do approach you, you know, it's it's got to be a foul. It's got to be serious, you know. So uh, I don't know if they just, you know, go in one ear and out the other, which kind of feels like, but I don't know what I got to do. Thanks, Brad. Ava. Um, Brad, Scott obviously said, we asked him about the last defensive possession, and he said, you know, mistake, but game was nothing to be ashamed of. What's your kind of general takeaway um, on that point as well? We should have lost the game. We should not have lost the game. We were down 18, played really good to come back, played really well the last couple minutes down the stretch. And just had some mishaps. Even Ivan had a little mishap giving Luca a little wide open. Uh, the pull up before before the Dorian finish hit for you. So it's got to lock me and be better. Christos. Brad, what was the biggest lesson of tonight's game for you? And with the, the three, with, you are three wins ahead of uh, the Bulls and the Raptors. How important for you to build on that effort? Well, we have to, you know, we uh, we got a team, I think, that's right in front of us on Monday. You know, it'll be, be a really good game for us to get. 
uh, you know, we can't dwell on this. We, we got to just continue to move forward, get better, uh, be confident in ourselves. I understand we still have a good chance of making a run, a good chance of making some noise. So, you know, we're, we're right back to the drawing board tomorrow and ready to go on Monday. Hey, Russell, what's what's the tone after a game like that where you guys you guys do fight back but end up just coming short? Uh, get ready for the next one. Ava. Russ, where are you able to um, find the holes in their defense, especially in, uh, I think, in the second quarter, you had 18 points there? Uh, just picking my spots. That's about it. Um, taking my time, attacking and being, trying to attack downhill. And we talked to Scott about the last defensive performance, and he mentioned, really mentioned that he's probably already seen the clip and everything. As someone who's definitely a mentor to him this season, do you say anything to him like that after this game, or do you wait till the next day or not mention it at all? Um, I haven't said nothing right now, um, but sometimes, uh, he, you know, he has to learn on his own. I can't walk him through every situation. So uh, give him some time, and recalibrate, and get ready for the next game. How do you kind of process this one where it was such a such a hard fight to kind of get back and everyone was really involved and it just comes down to the kind of the final point? Just move to the next one. Anyone else? Neil. Hey Russ. Brad was sharing with us that, you know, feedback from referees during games can sometimes be them just saying, yeah, sorry, we missed it. Is that the same kind of feedback that they're giving you during games? I'm not, I'm not sure. Hey, Daniel, um, you got the start in the second half, I guess. Is there any adjustment that you make in that role or is it you just go out and do the same thing that you do well? I'm um, really just go out and do the same thing, but at the same time, just really come out with as much energy as I possibly can. You know, you got to try to set the tone coming out in the second half, really. Pretty much because, I mean, the tone is already set in the first half, but, I mean, this is the NBA. So, coming out in the second half, guys are always going to turn on that switch. You know, if they, if they have – yeah, can't even talk. If they haven't had it turned on in the first half, they for sure are going to turn it on in the second half because, I mean, this is the league. That's what guys do. So, just being able to come out with as much energy as I possibly can to be able to, you know, withstand when they turn that switch on is just, you know, the major thing with being successful with a team like this because, I mean, energy is contagious contagious and it's always going to carry out throughout the game. Ava. Daniel, what were you seeing uh, in the first half from your guys' defense? They got really hot from the from three um, pretty early on. I mean, you know, we was just – it was. I feel like we were kind of like overhelping at times. Um, and it was at times where we kind of got, you know, broken down on the defensive end just by them attacking the basket and us worrying about shooters. You know, it was like one point in time where uh, Cleaver and Melly, they were in at the same time. And I, I don't know if we kind of like messed up on the matchup or anything, but I was on Cleaver and Melly was, you know, a bit just like standing around the arc and stuff. And I was just trying to make sure Cleaver wasn't trying to, you know, because he was already hot from three. He was, I think he was like six or seven at that point in time. And just really just trying to kind of like shut off his water. But I mean, you know, we had to kind of like buckle down coming out of the second half because, you know, we didn't want that to happen again throughout like the first part of the second half, not at all. And obviously they've got so many weapons, they've got Luca and everything, but what is it like trying to defend that ball movement? I mean, just watching on TV and watching in person, it's like pretty, pretty hard to keep track of. Yeah, it's tough. You know, it keeps, it keeps the defense scrambling. If they're moving the ball like that. It's really hard to, I would say, stay in front of guys. Because, I mean, you're either helping off or you're either, you know, in a situation to where you're getting screened, they move the ball, and then, boom, you're just basically in no man's land. But, I mean, as much as we were scrambling out there, we got in the face of most of their shooters. They just knocked down shots, you know. Neil. Hey, Daniel, just if you don't mind, can you run us through kind of what your day and last 24 hours have been like since, you know, getting on the flight, landing at in, Dull in Dallas? Like, what time did you get to sleep? Did you guys have, like, a morning COVID test that you had to take? Did you try and, like, get in a nap since you guys probably didn't get that much sleep? What is that all like? Um, I mean, it's tough, especially coming off a of back-to-back while you're on the road. 
because, you know, we're sometimes we're always in different time zones or certain things like that. So, I mean, we got in around maybe say like 1.30 last night. Well, this morning. <laughs> um, I got to sleep around maybe like two-ish, you know, and it just going through that process, we had to wake up, we had to get tested. Um, then moon, you know, we get back, I get back to my room. I kind of chill out for a bit, try not to fall asleep because we got film, certain things like that. And then we go down, we watch film, talk about, we get our game plan together. And then we got the rest of the time to ourselves until we get ready to get, get on to the bus. And so I try to get as much sleep in as I possibly can before, you know, I have to get on my bus time. But I mean, the process is really tough. You know, you really have to, buckle down and take the responsibility to actually sit back and relax and get the rest that you need to be able to come out and play like you want to play, especially on the back to back like this, because you played in Cleveland, got here at one o'clock in the morning. And, you know, it's kind of tough going back to sleep, you know, get off, getting off of a flight and then boom, you're in a hotel room that fast.